This, of course, is very interactive for the gymnast, hopefully very educational, but also my hope is that for coaches, um, this can kind of keep your, your fires lit and give you guys some ideas, um, as I'm sure you guys are all making your training plans all ready for when you get back. So hopefully you can incorporate some of this stuff into what you're doing. We are going to move, we're going to learn, we are going to focus on balance beam, but you don't need a balance beam. So you can see where I am, I'm on my deck, um, and I'm just gonna kinda use the straight lines here. If you don't have that, it's not a big deal. Um, as long as you are moving in a straight line, Biggest thing is just that you're on a hard surface, um, but you know, we've, we've all gotta be creative. So you know, I really want you guys imagining yourself on balance beam. Like put yourself in that space that you're on beam and don't let yourself kind of go over here. And as we're doing the beam exercises, really try to put yourself in that mental space and envision yourself on a balance beam. So that would also mean, you know, make sure that you're, you're pulling up as if you would on beam. You know, we don't want to practice this stuff and forget our upper body and just kind of, so you want to treat it like beam. And hopefully when we can get back up on those balance beams as soon as possible, we'll be able to take this stuff and translate it right back. So for those of you that I have not met, my name is Nicole Langevin, and I'm the owner of Precision Choreography and Precision Camps. Um, Precision is dedicated to raising the level of excellence in gymnastics, and that is through so many different routes. And for now, today, it's through uh, virtual routes. So um, I am, aside from being a choreographer and a clinician, I'm also a judge. I don't know if everybody knew that, but I am a level 10 rated judge, and um, I also own my gym judge with Chelsea Memel and so you're gonna see some crossover stuff with what we're doing um, believe it or not guys judges actually want you to score well I know it's a shocker right but judges really like to see great routines and be able to credit them with high scores so a lot of the stuff that we're doing I'm gonna bring that into play as well um, again no equipment needed this is for all levels so keep that in mind if I'm mentioning your choreography I'm also talking about compulsories because when I'm saying your choreography it's the stuff in between your skills so this applies to everybody okay. so we're talking about beam rhythm and we're also talking about beam dynamics. So I'm just curious if you guys know what rhythm and dynamics are or if you've heard what they are. Um, they kind of go hand in hand and that's why we're focusing on both of them today. Okay, should we start moving? Enough talking. Okay, so rhythm. Rhythm is The fact that your routine keeps moving. So what I would love everybody to do right now is I want you to do your beam sequence. Uh, your, I'm sorry, your mount sequence for beam. Not a skill, but your mount sequence. So for compulsories, I'm going to do this on the floor, right? You can just go down on your knees and pretend that's the straddle sit. Circle. Okay? And I want everybody to just take like the first three seconds of their mount sequence for beam and see if you can do it along to my snap, okay? <laughs> so for compulsories, again, we would be here. Circle, down, swing, and knee. All right, so let's do that together. Optionals, take the first few seconds of your beam mount sequence and see if you can follow along. Okay, here we go. Ready, and. And freeze. Okay, let's do that one more time. And present to the judge. And mount sequence, go. Freeze. All right. So basically, from a judging standpoint, if you're getting on the beam and you're taking a really long time to kind of get your story going, it makes us feel this sense that your routine is dragging and it has poor rhythm. <coughs> so again, you wanna get on the beam, get your routine moving. So I encourage everybody to take those mount sequences. It doesn't mean rush, but it means keep it moving. We don't wanna see a lot of adjusting on the beam. Get yourself adjusted and ready to go before you even get on the beam. All right, so we know rhythm is keeping your routine moving. It's also eliminating pauses. So the most common place to pause 
is usually before you do a big skill. You stand there. Maybe we do a little of this stuff. Anybody do that? So when you pause on beam, if you pause up to two seconds, it's a tenth off. If you pause for longer than two seconds, it's two tenths. So when you are talking about rhythm and thinking about rhythm, you also want to focus on not stopping for too long. So what I'd like everybody to do right now is for optionals, I want you to think about your flight series or your flight elements, like your back handspring or your back handspring layout. And compulsories, I want you to think about your back walkover, your back ascension roll, your back handspring, your cartwheel, or your handstand, depending on your level. But that big acro skill in your routine. Everybody got theirs? Everybody know what theirs is? Cool? Okay. So now I want you to back up three seconds before that skill. So I'm going to pretend that I'm doing a back handspring. So if I back up three seconds, then I have my choreography. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off screen. I'm going to go step, cross, show, extend, prepare, back handspring. So everybody right now, take a second and do a few moments before your acro skill. And I want everybody to do that three times. And I'll do mine three times. Okay, so what we did is we just did a little bit of the choreography before our acro skill, and then we stopped. Now, when we do that, we're actually telling our brains and telling our bodies that after this is a stop. So what I want everybody to do right now is I want everybody to think of a word or a color or a number, anything that lasts about a second and a half. I'm going to go with yellow. And I want you to, when you finish your choreography, I want you to say your word yellow and then swing your arms as if you're doing your skill and say the skill. So watch how I'm going to do this. Yellow. Back handspring. All right, compulsories. You can do yours. Yellow. Cartwheel. So you're going to initiate that skill, and you're going to say the word just as you're about to get into it. And that's your moment to breathe and focus. So we're choreographing the pause. We're choreographing how long it's going to take, and we're going to teach ourselves to keep moving through the choreography. And maybe you stop there. All right, can everybody do that three times? And I'll do it too. Back handspring. Yo. Back handspring. Yellow. Back handspring. Okay. So what we just did is we took away possibly a tenth of a deduction. Because if you stop for too long, you're gonna get a tenth, or you might get two tenths of a deduction. So think of every skill in your routine. If you're stopping your rhythm, thinking, taking the breath, and then going, you're adding deductions. You're also going to get our overall rhythm deduction on top of the pause. So that's the first lesson today is I want everybody to really plan on choreographing into the start of all your skills. So if your coach tells you to do a dance through on beam, don't stop here and back up, do the takeoff, practice where how that's going to go into the rhythm of your routine. Cool? So yeah, every time you pause, you can get a tenth. And then overall, if your routine has a lot of pauses and it feels slow, then you can get another rhythm deduction on top of that. So it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. Um, so rhythm is, you know, it's continuous. Think of it that way. It doesn't mean rush. It just has to keep moving. All right. We're going to get into some fun stuff in a minute, guys. Um, so now I want you to think about dynamics. Does anybody know what dynamics is? So dynamics in music 
has to do with sounds or the music being really strong, really loud, or soft. That's dynamics in music. So if we take that into choreography and we think about beam, our dynamics, maybe we're not gonna get on beam and, and be loud or be quiet, but we can move loud or we can move soft. So that's dynamics me, as far as artistry goes. Does everybody get that? So we have strong or we have soft. We also have the dynamics definition in gymnastics, which is making the difficult look effortless. So let's think about that for a second. Doing something hard, making it look easy. That is also dynamics. So if you do a round off on beam that looks like it's hard for you to do, and it's a little slow, and you don't pop off your hands, and you pike down, it looks hard, you are, you are losing in the dynamics category. Whereas if you do a round off and you pop off your hands and you land with your chest up, boom, you've shown dynamics. You've shown you've done something hard and you made it look easy. Well, choreography is the same thing. You want to, on beam, you want to look like you're just dancing across the beam, bum, 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 I'm going to stop, boom, smooth, sharp. I'm just playing. And that makes it look effortless. And that's what we want to get to. So dynamics and rhythm combined are what are gonna make a great beam routine. Okay, so we're gonna work on some dynamics exercises. Some of this stuff you guys are gonna remember from like your preschool classes, um, but it's very effective. So I'm gonna back up a little bit and I'm gonna teach you guys four things, okay? Hands on your hips, please. And everybody go up on your toes. You mean a locked releve, and I want you to do quick, sharp steps, locking your leg in releve, legs in releve. Quick, 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 ah! All right, let's do that again, everybody up. Quick and sharp. Okay, good. All right, now the next one. We're gonna do weight transfer steps. So we're gonna bend back leg, both legs, front legs, extend. Back leg, both legs, front leg, extend. Okay, let's back up. I'm gonna do that facing you guys now, a little quicker. And back, both front, up, back, both front, up, back, both front, up. Everybody good? All right, now we're going to do switch foots. So you're gonna put your right foot in front, your legs are locked, and you're going to hop, switch, switch. Okay, everybody do that? Switch, 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 switch. Okay, let's pivot to the other side. Left foot in front, high ankles, and switch, switch. Switch, 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 switch. Okay, and then the last one is gonna be a chasse. So we're gonna go through fourth position plie, Squeeze our legs together, point our feet, and come down. And let's do the other side too. Plie, point, and down. Whoa. Plie, point, and down. All right. So that's four things. We're going to call these things A, B, C, and D. So A, which was our first one, is our lock leg steps. They do that with me. B is our weight transfers. And C is our switch foot. And D is our chasse. We good? We're good, we're good. All right. Pop quiz. C. A. Try to let you guys go first. This was A. Um, B. Hope you guys are doing weight transfers. Uh, 
Uh, A. D. All right. So those are four things that are pretty simple, right? But you see they all have a little bit different rhythm to them, and they have a little different dynamics. So we can take those four things, and we're going to put them in combination. So coaches, this is a, a, a great thing to do to kind of keep the, keep the minds moving as well. Um, so we have our A, B, C, and D. Everybody knows what they are. And I'm going to call out a different sequence for you guys to put together. All right? Now, it's very important. It doesn't matter how many steps of each thing that you do. You just want to kind of look at the space you have and go, okay, I, I can't do seven chasses across here, right? So think of your space. So first one we're going to do is going to be very simple. A, B, C, D. All right, let's do it together. I'm going to back up. Hands on your hips. And here we go. A, B, C, D. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the order now. All right, so B, C, A, D. You guys ready? Okay, let's do it. B, C, A, D. Oh, I'm not on the screen, there we go. On three, one, two, three. B, C, A, D. A, B, C, D. Let's switch it up. B, C, D, A. All right, here we go. Okay, all right, here we go. B, C, D, A. Here we go. From so one, two, three. B, C, D, A. Awesome. All right. So we're going to do it backwards now. So we're going to do it backwards now. So you're gonna take those really simple things and we're gonna do them backwards. So we'll review this. You guys are gymnasts, you can do this easily. Here we go. So A, backwards. B, backwards. Front leg, both legs, back leg. Front leg, both legs, back leg. C doesn't really have a backwards. And D, be backwards, shall I say? So let's go A, B, C, D backwards. Here we go. I'm going to start nice and close to you guys so I can have some space. And backwards, there you go. A, B, C, D. That was kind of cool. I liked that one. All right. So we've got four things going forwards, four things going backwards. So now we can mix it up because now we have eight things. So we're going to go forward and backwards, we're going to combine these, all right? So we're going to call the ones that are going forward front, so A front, B front, C front, D front, and the ones going backwards, A back, B back, C back, D back. Sound good? Okay, I love seeing all these people saying, I got it right, I got it right. All right, so we're going to go. Ugh, let's keep it simple first. A front, B back, C front, D back. Hmm? We do it? Yes, I'm imagining you all going, yeah, we can do it. A front, B back, C front, D back. All right, here we go. Don't make fun of me if I mess this up. All right, ready? Hands on your hips. Imagine you're on a beam. Releve up, tight bellies. And A front, B back, C front, D back. Whew. All honesty, did anybody trip over themselves like I did? Please tell me you did. I totally tripped over myself. All right, so we're going to go whew, A, D, C, B. A front, D back, C front, B back. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. Hands on your hips. 
All right, D is the chasse. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, A, D, B, C, did I do it right? I think so, let's try that again. Belly's tight, releve, hands on your hips, and A, D, C, B. All right, cool. So you guys can do that. Um, if you come up with your own really, really simple movements that have specific dynamics. Dip walks are a great one. I didn't choose dip walks today, I usually do, but obviously, you know, that's where you bend and come through, but we don't have the space on the side unless you're on a balance beam. Dip walks are a great one. That's a great example of smooth movement, and it also gives you a little level change, which is great on beam, because we're so limited. So things like dip walks are really nice. Um, uh, yeah, you can do them front, you can do them back, you can do them side, and challenge each other. Give them letters, and then shout out combinations. A front, C front, D back, B front, and just see if you can get it, see if you can do it quick. Um, it's gonna keep you sharp, it's gonna keep your coordination on, because that's the most important thing with gymnastics. Um, and it'll get you comfortable on beam, comfortable with those changes, giving that feeling like you're just playing through movement on this little four inch beam, because it's effortless for you. Okay, I wanna go back to dynamics real quick, um, but I wanna make sure everybody understands the, the strong or the sharp versus the smooth. So does everybody know what an arabesque is? An arabesque is a back kick, basically, or a back leg lift. So that's an arabesque. It doesn't have to be super high, but it's just a, a backward leg lift, all right? So I want you guys all to stand we have to stand with proper footwork. Footwork day is tomorrow. I want you to stand with your front foot flat and turned out, but you guys can't see my foot, and your back foot in tondu behind you. It's gonna look like this, okay? And hands on your hips. So you've got your front foot flat, your back foot in tondu, your hands on your hips, and you're imagining that you're on a beam. And I want everybody to do an arabesque Back leg lift, really sharp, really strong, really loud. You can do those on your own. Maybe you step into it. Maybe you do it in releve. But I want it to be loud. Even though you're not making audible noise, I want it to be a loud movement. Okay? And now let's add some arms to it. Now there's no rule in choreography of what you have to do, so I want you guys to think of an arm movement that would go along with an arabesque kick that is loud. All right, let's play with that for a minute. Hope you guys are being loud without using your voices. Oh, that's a loud one. Loud kicks, loud kicks. Now we're gonna do soft ones. So if you were to take that same movement, and I'm just gonna take one of mine, um, I don't even know what I did. Oh, I went like this with my arms. Like, like I'm saying stop, I went So that was my my loud one. Now I'm gonna make it soft. I'm gonna make it quiet, and I'm gonna make it smooth. So same movement, I'm just gonna alter it a little bit and make it soft. So I want you guys to pick your, your favorite one that you did that was loud, your favorite arm position that you did with your arabesque kick. And I want you to take that same movement, so not mine with this, and soften it. And soften the kick as well. All right, so let's just take a, set, a few seconds to do that. Are we good, are we good? Okay, so we took our strong movements, and we made them soft. Now, I want you guys to think about your beam routines. And just so you know, those exercises that we did with like the A, B, C, and D, you can add arms to that stuff too. Um, but because we're focusing so much on just rhythm, I didn't, I didn't give you that. All right, so now I want you to take your beam routine. 
We're going to take our choreography. We're going to take out our skills. But like what we talked about at the beginning, you've still got to practice the thought process, the positioning, the timing, and the takeoff for your skills when you're working on the choreography. That is so, so important. If you want to be able to insert your skills back into your routine and have it have that same rhythm and artistry and dynamics, you've got to be practicing the takeoff for the skills while you're practicing the choreography. It's still a dance through. Okay, so I want you to think of your routine now. Compulsory, optional, doesn't matter. And I want you to come up with a series of, a rhythm series. Okay, so like we did A, B, C, and D. So that went sharp, smooth, sharp, smooth, if you didn't notice. Um, but then when we mixed it up, different letters, we ended up with like sharp, sharp, smooth, smooth, um, sharp, smooth, smooth, sharp, just by changing the order of those movements that we were doing. So I want everybody to just close your eyes. I'm going to do it with you. And I want you to think of the words smooth and sharp. And I want you to say, say a six times in any order. That made no sense. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I can say six words. They have to be sharp or smooth, but they can be in any order. So I'm going to go sharp, sharp, smooth, sharp, smooth, smooth, sharp. I don't know if that was six, but you guys get what I'm saying. So you're going to take six. You're going to say either sharp or smooth, and it can be in any order, and you need to say six times. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Can you? <laughs> um, okay, so maybe yours is smooth, smooth, sharp, sharp, smooth, smooth, sharp, sharp, whatever. Okay, come up with that order. Who's got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You can come up with that order, and then you're going to start doing your routine from the time you finish your mount sequence. Okay, so at the beginning, we went through mount sequence a little bit. I want you to start from after your mount sequence. So you've gotten on the beam, you've done whatever, and you're up, and you're going to start moving. I'm going to take that beginning part of your routine, and I want you to start doing it to the rhythm that you decided. So what's great about this is, let's say that my routine, right, goes like this, and then that right? That was a really smooth movement and then a sharp one. But what if I decided I was going to go uh, sharp, sharp, smooth? Well, now I have to take this that was so smooth and then sharp and I have to reverse it. I totally changed it, right? So I want you guys to do that. Take, take an order of rhythm of smooth, smooth, sharp, sharp, smooth, sharp, whatever you want. Maybe write it down or just memorize it. And then start doing your routine and make it follow that rhythm. And what will happen, and coaches, this is really interesting if I have coaches watching. You're, when you watch the athletes do this, and you guys too, when you, when you are doing you may find yourself doing something totally opposite, right? Like I took my smooth movement and I made it sharp, and then I took my sharp movement, and I had to make it smooth. I never would have done that before. And maybe when you do that, you're gonna go, oh, that looks really cool. So there's, there's power in exploring movement. The other thing that you can do, though, is once you've experimented with this a lot, designate what works, and then keep that rhythm. Then when you're doing your routine, you're going to say, when you're doing your dance through, you're going to say the words, smooth, sharp, sharp, smooth, smooth, sharp, and really designate that. And the goal is when you're doing beam choreography, you should always know what type of movement you're doing. If you're definitely doing sharp movement, you're definitely doing smooth movement, and not really anything in between. You can transition but know what the intention of that movement is. Is it supposed to be sharp? Is it supposed to be smooth? And that's gonna give your routine that flavor that's gonna make it artistically fun to watch. It's gonna make it look effortless, and it's going to affect your rhythm, your dynamics, and then also your artistry. Artistry is its own score, or it's its own deduction, right? But it's impacted by your rhythm. Even though it's not, you know, that's a separate thing. If you do a routine that's 
all smooth and maybe it's slow and it never has that like ooh moment. It's affecting your artistry, whether you realize it or not. So these two small things that we're talking about, rhythm and dynamics, it affects your artistry. And then it affects, are you going to be overtime or not? Overtime is another deduction. So you have your pauses, you have your rhythm, you have your dynamics, you have your overtime. Then you have your artistry. It's all impacted by this stuff. Now, there are other factors for artistry, and we'll get into that in our next few sessions. But, you know, that's, that's huge right there. So if you guys can take these things and implement them in your routines, that'll be great. So I'm going to give you guys some homework. I want you guys to script the rhythm of your routine. Or I should say the dynamics of your routine. Script that. So that means I want you to write out a list of just smooth, sharp, sharp, smooth, smooth, sharp, sharp, whatever the heck you want. And I want you to script it. And I want you to know which word goes with every movement of that routine. And then I want you to start doing dance throughs according to that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. But before you script it, experiment with different ways. And really decide which movements you want to be sharp and which ones you want to be smooth. Script them out and then start doing your dance throughs. And remember, when you're doing your dance throughs, do the takeoff for your skills also. Okay? Um, I hope everybody had a great time. I'm going to give you one more thing to try. It's not necessarily homework, but, you know, try doing your routine to music. As you're exploring smooth and sharp, put some music on and just see. Just see what things work, what things don't, and get the feeling of moving to a rhythm and keeping yourself that routine going. Is there a preference on beam for sharp or smooth moves, or do we – or should we have a combination? You should definitely have a combination. Um, judges in <laughs> across the board, it does not matter what we like. It does not matter. It is not, it is not our job to apply our opinion to routines. So I could tell you what I like, but that doesn't matter. Um, when we're judging, we are judging competence. We're judging artistry. We're judging rhythm. We're judging dynamics. So find what works best for your athletes and stick with that. And I would say the best suggestion is if you have an athlete who is just really comfortable with sharp stuff, the majority of their routine can be that if that's where they shine. But just find a couple moments to contrast with smooth. Just a moment to switch it up and then vice versa. If you're somebody that likes to do slow and smooth, you're gonna need to find a few spots to just switch it up, but the majority of your routine can be what you like. I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, I, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe.